Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in Photoshop is uh, talk a bit about the interface. Now, the interface is the appearance of the program, right? So the word interface applies to any program that you work with on your machine. Um, it's made out of the menus up here. And then you have the toolbar. And in Photoshop, you have these so-called palettes right now the palettes you can move them around you can detach them from each other and so forth so sometimes you get to lose the original configuration of the palettes so the first thing we're gonna see is how to regain the original configuration that's to go to window workspace and reset palette locations when you do that everything will get back to normal so that's a good thing to know here now as you know Photoshop deals with image manipulation so let's say that I want to open an image and see things that I can do with that image as you would know you go to file open but there is a much faster way to do this in Photoshop all you have to do is double click here in the empty background and you would open an image now when you select an image you're gonna see a preview of that down here with the file size which we'll talk about later um, so let's say that I want this image here then the image gets here of course and the thing that I noticed here naftopper.gif naftopper is the name of the image right so let's save it as something else let's save it as jazz for example so I choose file save as now here you need to know where to save it for now because I'm gonna leave it later I'll just save it on the desktop and I'll call it for example jazz all right, so that's a good thing happening here. I already had the folder called Jazz, so it went straight inside it. So just name it Jazz1, for example, and it will be saved. For now, I'll just press OK. So now it has a different name. And here I have the extension or the format of the file, which we'll talk about in detail a bit later. This is the add sign, which refers to the zooming factor. So here, this is a very small image so I'm seeing this at 100% here which means that this is the actual size of the image when I print it it's gonna be this size alright so I can zoom into the image or zoom out of the image zooming into or zoom in means that you're gonna get closer to something zoom out you're gonna get further away from that same thing so in case I wanted to zoom in first I'm gonna expand the document area and then there's my zoom tool because this thing here is called the tools palette it has tools that we're gonna use in Photoshop there's the zoom tool and you would notice that it says zoom tool Z Z is the actual hotkey it's called the hotkey or a keyboard shortcut so if you press Z on the keyboard, you're going to be taken directly to your zoom tool. And here, you can zoom in and out. So now, if I look at the magnification, it says 500%, which is five times bigger than the original size that I started with. 500 over 100 is 5 okay although I did see it in bigger scale I now start to see these dots so if I zoom over a bit more the dots will be even more prominent and these dots are called pixels in computer graphics a pixel is a dot on the screen with a color now whenever you have a small image you're not gonna have a lot of pixels because of the small size when you have a big image you can have more pixels and therefore a better quality for the image in Photoshop you always think in terms of quality 
The smaller the image, the less the quality, the higher the image, the better the quality. There are other factors, of course, but at this stage, quality is proportional to image size. So, um, anyway, now I want to go back to the original size. When I'm in the zoom tool, or whichever tool here, you're going to see the options for that tool up here. So I am in zoom. These are the options for zoom. If I was in paintbrush, I would see different options and so forth. So each one of those tools, you will see the options of that tool up here. So back to the zoom tool. If I choose actual pixels, it will regain the 100%. So in case you were zoomed in or zoomed out, if you click here, you have a plus and a minus. Minus means zoom out, so you can use this to zoom out. And remember, by zooming out, you get further away from the image until you can't see it all that clearly anymore. So anyway, actual pixels, and there's your 100%. Fit on screen will make the image as big, in zooming that is, as the available size on screen. If I choose ignore palettes and fit on screen, it's not going to take the palettes into consideration. So if I hide the palettes now or close them, you're going to see that this fits all the screen. This is a zooming factor. It's not actually resizing the image. It's just getting closer and further away from the image. So actual screen. And to get back my palettes, which I hid, I go to Window, Workspace, Reset Palettes, Location. Now print size, will show you the print size of the image, which in this case is the same as the 100% size. We're going to talk about differences a bit later. There are many ways to zoom in and out. I'll explore more um, in a second. In case you wanted to open more than one image at the same time, which is something you do a lot in Photoshop, again, double click and um, let's go here. You press control on the keyboard to select whichever file you want to open. By pressing control, you add to your selection and you press open and there are the images opened. Now each one, according to their size, will come at a certain magnification. So um, let's minimize this, minimize that. Let's take this for example. This is 50% of the original size. If I zoom over, I see the 100%. So now, um, if I zoom over a bit more, this is 350%, which is 3.5 times bigger. I get closer to the detail. But whenever I do that, in this case, I'm not seeing the pixels as I did with the jazz image. If I zoom a bit more, I would start to see the pixels. But otherwise, here I'm not seeing the pixels because the image that I started with was already bigger. Um, so in case you zoom in, more, you would eventually start to see the pixels of any image. So any image, no matter how big it is, if it's 30 meters long, you're going to zoom over and eventually start to see the pixels. Now, on the screen, it's a bit... Can you see the discoloration here? It's not very clear on the screen. Yeah, it's clear down here. You see these... Um, pixelations here and there and there this is a bad thing it's not a good thing because this will reduce the quality of the image right these are called JPEG artifacts I'll talk about this in detail later but for now the format of this image is a JPEG which is the, the format that you find a lot on the internet all right when you download images from the internet most of them are gonna be JPEGs 
right? So building two dot JPEG, and uh, these are good images, the, the JPEG format images. They are good because you can place them online. They don't take a lot of space, and they're used a lot in web design. But their problem, you can also send them by email. The problem is that they compress the image, which is <coughs> sorry, which is lower down the quality of the image, right? So here you can see those um, artifacts. Now from a distance at 100%, for somebody who is not a professional, they won't see them. For a trained eye, which is someone who has worked with Photoshop for a, some time, they would notice right away the JPEG artifacts. There are ways to control the quality of the JPEG. So you can have a JPEG with a high quality so it won't have these artifacts, these discolorations. Or, in case you want to send this as an email, you would reduce the quality and have these artifacts. Now, as a general uh, tip, whenever I'm giving a client of mine a test, not the final product, I always reduce the quality of the JPEG. Because in case the client goes with the image and doesn't pay me, he cannot really use that image because it's very low quality, right? But whenever I deliver the final, I don't use JPEG at all. I use another format which does not reduce the quality, which we'll talk about later. But that's a good thing in case you were giving someone, someone uh, a test, a test product, a test print, you can have the low resolution JPEG because they cannot use that anyway. All right, um, what am I doing now? This process that I'm doing now is called panning, right? Which is like holding a camera and moving with the camera around to see different sections of um, something. There are many ways to pan in Photoshop, as there are many ways to zoom. If you click on the hand tool down here, you can pan around. If I go to my jazz image and I try to pan, I cannot pan. Who knows why? You can't answer. Who knows why? Yeah, because I'm seeing all the image anyway. Because the image here is very small, that I'm seeing the whole image, so there's no way to pan around it. But here, I'm not seeing the whole image, because the image is bigger than my space. Therefore, I need to pan to see the whole thing. You understand? Very important. But uh, what's more important here is the actual hand tool. I never use hand tool. I never go here and pan. Everybody in the world who uses Photoshop to pan, while you are in whichever tool, let's say that you are in the zoom tool, which we talked about. To pan, you press the space bar and you click and drag. And that would be panning. So no matter where you are, in which section of Photoshop, holding the spacebar and dragging will let you pan, in case your image is panable. Very important. And um, that's the hand tool. Now another way to zoom in and out, which is the way I use the most, is Control minus and Control plus. You see that they work very fast. Control minus to zoom out, Control plus to zoom in, space bar to pan. This will make your work in Photoshop very fast. Control minus and plus. Another way to zoom in, out, and pan is through the navigator window, which is up here. So if you click on this rectangle or square, the red one, you would also be panning. And you can click here on the slider to zoom in and out. So that way you can focus on one part of the image by seeing a whole, the whole image in preview up here. So it's another way to pan and zoom. I personally don't use it all that much because it's much faster to pan and zoom the way I told you. Control plus, minus, and spacebar.